spoken to Apex Audio. So, I've been reading on the internet about people and engineers, producers wanting to know how to improve mixes and the secret magic behind getting good sounding records that'll work on a um, streaming platform or on radio. So, for me, there's no sort of secret behind making good mixes, it's just practice and spending hours doing it every day to the point where you're a decent engineer. There are things that you can do to make that process a bit quicker. Um, first one is organisation. So, in my sessions I normally have everything in a certain, certain colour, get everything set up the way I want it. Um, cut down sessions, sometimes you get sent a session with 100 tracks in it. It's a nightmare to do, it's a nightmare to mix. So what I normally do is I bounce everything down into the stereo tracks or comp things together. So for this vocal, um, this vocal here was around six tracks put together. And, and um, I just mixed them down, you know, a stereo track, just balanced them in bet with a uh, lead vocal. My skin's falling off, I'm breaking at the seams. So that all together was like ten tracks of vocals. There's just no need for it. If you can do something on one fader, it's a lot easier than doing it on five, six, seven, or even ten faders. So I'd normally just mix everything down into a stereo track vocal. And um, process it from there. Obviously, I've left the original vocal on its own. My skin's falling off. I've just done some effects to the stereo track one and balanced it. Back and vocals, it uh, wasn't too much. You know, just simple um, four tracks of back and vocals. Quite manageable. Don't really need to do much to it, you know. So all you really got to do is just bust it out, group it, mix it, do what you need to do with it. Um, similar with guitars, you can do, you can make a one stereo track, or bust it out, put a one fader, like I normally just do that. Um, drums, there was, you know, most of these were mono tracks. Done some sample replacement. The snare drums about four snares laid together. See so, you now, I'll just uh, mix it down into one, makes it a lot more manageable. Same with the toms. They're not too bad though, because they're just flowing rap toms, so it's not overly complicated. Bass, it's just one bass mono track, whatever it is. Uh, So what I'm trying to say is just organise your mix, organise your sessions. See, this was I think it was around 45 tracks. Cut it down 25. It's a lot more manageable. Mixer fits on one screen. We all my buses and effects ends all there. So I can just get on with it instead of um, trying to figure out where things are. Um, and that's a really good way to speed up your workflow a little bit. In the minute I'm about an hour into this mix an hour and a half so it's you know it's it's not finished, not perfect, but it's ninety percent of it's uh, and that's just through getting what I want it done what I want done quickly. And you can't do that without having an organised session, so that's definitely number one. Is uh organising 
organisation and getting things um, laid out properly. So one thing I might do is this clean guitars here, they're all the same guitar. But it's across three tracks, you've got one mono, two in it, two pan left and right to create a stereo track. It's the same thing, so I might just go mix that down. You do mix it down, wait for it to do it. You know, it takes 15 seconds. Saves you three faders. You get one. Simple as that. And that'll mix it down into a stereo track. Again, organisation. How I've gone down from 25 and I'll go to 22 tracks. A lot more manageable. So there you go. It's already processed, so. Just like that, everything's where it needs to be and get rid of them. Now I'm just send that to me sub mix. Problem solved. Made it a lot more manageable in terms of um, getting things mixed. You can also do that to I, you don't want to commit commit to the effects you've put on it. You just bypass it and whatever door you're using. Mix it down. There you go. So I'm going to rename that. The same with naming things. Um, make sure everything's named the way you want it to be. So you know what things are. So you uh, you got your kick, snare, toms, silhouettes, bass. And I would rather these be named left and right, but well, you could turn room guitar, but it's it's not a big deal. I know what they are. See, there's something like this. That's fine, you know. Lead vocal, double track. Just a copy of this one. I don't know what it is. Simple. And uh, yeah, there's no point having things overly complicated. So yeah, so buses and routing, same thing. I've got the drum bus. Always set that up. Acoustic guitars. Uh, that's just so I can do group processing and stuff on it. And I'm lazy, so I use this as a um, a bus, so I can just use one stereo SSL channel on it instead of using two and trying to get the same settings. There you go, bang, saved you five minutes. Um, yeah, it's just time saving measures that I do to keep things. Organised, so. So for number two, uh, I'd say uh, like having overly complicated sending returns. So from the effects, I've got three effects, two delays, and a reverb. You you don't want to have seven reverbs for seven buses because for one, it's going to make it doesn't really make much sense in a mix. If you've got seven things in different spaces, you want everything to share a space. That's what it is. So it's, I've got this massive reverb on this vocal. My skin's falling off. I'm breaking at the seams. He's holding me under, and I can't breathe. So if I were to put a different reverb in on the, uh, where is it, yeah, on that guitar, it would be called way too cool, 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 so I'll just put a little bit of delay on it, gives it a little bit of space. 
bit like the drums. You know, the snare's got its own space. It's got a nice little tight room reverb on it. And now the whole drum kit gets closer to the So sub mix wise, every every individual track and all the buses get rooted to the sub mix. One simple reason is to drive into this. Um, it's got a sweet spot really, so it sounds totally different if you were to use this fade out to go into it. So I group everything up, bus it out to the sub mix. <laughs> I can just control what I want to do with it. Just go to the chorus. I'll just normally drive into it until it hits around 2 to 3 dB. And there, uh, well, this the input section it sounds totally different than if you were to use that. So it's always just best to drive into it or get your level into it from a sub mix. Because apparently, the way this is set up is um, designed in a way so at zero is a sweet spot, so it's always just better to drive. Drive a plug in from a sub mix, something like this anyway. What else can I mention before? Yeah. Let's get mixes, um, things like this, it's just all about organising it and making it manageable. Yeah, so it's so getting good mixes. It's all I just about lots of practice until you're comfortable with what you're supposed to be doing. I don't use a lot of over co overly complicated plugins. Um, for example, that's my effects processing for me vocal. We built this up with bricks and mortar. Yeah, so this has got two reverbs on it. The reason for that is I've got CLA unplugged on doing um a medium length hole with a quite a long pre delay on it. You make PR it here, actually. My falling okay. off. I'm breaking at the sea. 
just gives it a little bit more depth. You can't really hear it that well once the other reverb's on. My skin's falling off, I'm breaking at the seams. Yeah. But I think of the. Um, it sounds quite good when it's all mixed together. <laughs> Just adds another layer to that vocal, especially for uh, places like. Especially in that first uh, way, which is probably going for it. So you've got this big vocal going on. Needs a big reverb. Needs a bit of depth to it. And the stereo track reverb um, vocal does um, a little bit of chorusing on it, so it really gives it a bit of girth. Yeah, and I'm not the lead vocal, is it? So it's a tiny little bit of auto tune. Yeah, a little bit of wave tune. Yeah, some um, in between. It's just for a certain notes where it was poking out a little bit and it wasn't perfectly, um, not perfectly, but a little bit off. So that's just tuned there just to make it a little bit more. A little bit more of a cleaner performance. Obviously, mixing, you don't really want to be doing a lot of production stuff to it, you just want to make it good. You just want to make it as sound as best as you can get it. And obviously, it's going to take quite a while to do that. Especially for a track like this, the vocals you need to pop out and have a little bit of interest in things, air effects and stuff going on. Because the guitars now, we're not really doing much, playing a little bit of a melody, so I can just kind of be taking back a little bit drums. You know, you want the big powerful drums for like a pop track like this, it works well. I want a big drum kit. And how you get that is just reverb in a um, DVX116 parallel. Just mixed in a little bit, you know, get how just under 10 dBs at game reduction. With that off. It doesn't, you know, the drums are a bit buried in the mix when you bring it on. Makes it a little bit more punchier, a bit tighter. Brings the transients out of it, you know. It just gives that drum kit the glue it needs and the oomph that you want in this type of track. So, what else can I talk about? Yeah, drum guitars. Not a lot going on. A little bit of EQ. Needs a little bit mids. We got a bit of mids, a little bit of take a little bit of uh, low mids out. I passed roominess. I don't know when, because you don't need it. It wasn't a bad, to bad tone in the first place, it's just... 
didn't really work together with everything else and it was getting a bit lost. The lead guitar. Kind of the same thing. Just the mids up, higher faster. Little bit of compression. And the FSL channel. And a little bit more on here, just to level it out. And it kind of just brings a little bit more of the um, higher mid frequencies out of it. It works well in the content complexes. Yeah, so everything's just doing what it's supposed to be doing. There's enough room for everything, so you're not going to really get a lot of cluttered. So the big thing with a track like this is uh, kicking the bass. So because the kick's a lot lower, um, I decided to, decided to get some uh, more of a mid mid range out of the um, bass, so I really boosted it, run it into 11.76, over and down, the old version of it, gives it a nice bit of grit. Still a bad sound of bass to begin with, but it just needed a little bit more um, bite to it to make it come through the mix properly. Um, so yeah, that's about it really. So when you can get your mixes down to something like that, it, um, you know, you're not going to spend seven hours talking about it. You're not going to spend seven hours mixing it. I might spend a little bit more time and um, get a few more things sorted out. So this kick drum, you know, it's a little bit. Could do it a little bit more punch. Could do a little bit more beta. So I want a stereo. So we're on free kick, little band. That should probably do. Yeah, 
just like that, they were really simple things. It's just learning how to do things and knowing what frequency range things live at. You can sort of beat that, obviously around 3k, could do a little bit of dialing in actually. Yeah, so about what I do. Brings the beater out of that kick a little bit. Yeah. It just makes it a little bit more puncher, makes it fit in the track a little bit better. A little 3db boost like that will make a massive difference. The, the kick uh, actually cuts through a little bit better now. Um, what else can I talk? I yeah, about this piano, some things just don't need touching. This piano. Sounds good the way it does. So I bar EQ in it and compressing it and it sounds really good naturally, especially in the contents of the mix. It's so and it just works well, especially when it's layered with this guitar. So it's, it's known when to need things the way they are, or EQ things, or compress them. Sometimes you just don't need to do anything to it. Get that piano, no reverb. Because it's got that natural decay to it. So it already sounds quite good. However, on a different subject, you use acoustic guitars. It sounded uh, very, very boomy, very great. Um, not a lot of um, Yeah, those acoustic guitars are just add a little bit of rhythm. You need some of that you don't really want for it to really pork out in the mix. You need some, I mean, a decision to just EQ the top end a little bit. No, I mid, get rid of some of that boominess and mix it in with the rest of the rhythm guitars because that's really what it's fighting for. Instruments where it's 
not you don't want to hear it more like you want to feel what it's doing if that makes sense which probably doesn't to be fair but it's one of those decisions you got to make early on in the mix what you wanted what you wanted to say and sound like see when you sit down to mix something you want to have a goal of what you want to achieve otherwise you'll just be sat there mixing it all day so for me this the goal for this track was to make something that was um like really already like a pop mix which is what it's trying to do so it's what i wanted to do with it those types of tracks it's all about the vocal so I concentrated on getting that vocal right and the drums right because the drums are um, obviously the backbone of it the track the vocals take the lead you know, your guitars supporting it your bass doing and support the guitar so everything if you think about how everything has its job then it becomes a lot easier to mix it so the background vocals are more taken more like a lead vocal in that context uh, so it's obviously important to make sure those were heard Yeah, so if you mix those like a normal background vocal, then they might have got a little bit lost in with the rest of it. So I'll we'll show you what I did with that. Very similar to the lead vocal. Yeah, did push a little bit of the top end, built it up a bit. Slammed it into a compressor, modern version. I don't really didn't really want the grit on it. Just left it the way it was because it was a nice clean vocal. And that same stereo reverb that went to the lead vocal as well, so. Ooh, you make us feel like home. And it just glues it together and it makes it work. And the thing is, when you use. I think what I go back to the same when I was using the same the different um, reverb and stuff Just if you're sending multiple things to the same reverb then you're going to have those things in the same room and it's going to glue those instruments together a lot better it's a bit like the lead guitar and the rear um, room guitar both being sent to the slap delay and it just uh, helps it makes it sound more like one cohesive guitar track If you understand what I mean there, uh, it's just kind of glues those two tracks together. And it works, uh, complement each other, and it works. And it's in the same space, so it's taking up the same room, so you don't have to worry about making sure the guitars and the little vocals don't fight with each other because then um, it's in two totally different spaces. Even though they might. Mm, match a little bit frequency wise yeah so i'm running out of things to say so yeah um hope you learn something from this obviously i'm not going to be winning a grammy anytime soon but i hope i managed to show you a little bit about how i do things so you can take it away and learn something from it and obviously biggest things that are always say is what makes when, when you sit down and make something a little bit easier is just having everything organised is definitely number one and don't be overdoing it because when you overdo it you end up just ruining the mix so yeah there are definitely things you can do to polish this one up but yeah 
Så eh, thanks for watching.